My name is Graham Turfey from McMaster University in Hamilton in Canada. I'm attending the American Society of Hematology, where I will present the results of the Zalia study, which is a new non-interventional study looking at river oxaban in the treatment of patients with deep vein thrombosis. The evaluation of new anticoagulant drugs across the spectrum of thromboembolic disease involves phase three randomized clinical trials where the inclusion criteria are rigid, the endpoints well-defined and adjudicated, uh, and uh, with a, a firm statistical plan for assessment of the outcomes. The possibility of translating that information uh, to clinical practice depends on how close the, the patient characteristics are in real life to those who, who are included in randomized clinical trials. And we know that because of the inclusion criteria, many patients are excluded. So what we have now done is evaluated real life evidence in a number of ways, such as registries and phase four non-interventional studies. In the treatment of venous thromboembolism, we've demonstrated that river oxaban is very effective based on the results of the Einstein DVT, PE, and extension studies. Uh, the question that clinicians want to know is that can that information be translated into clinical practice? Uh, we have completed the phase four Zalia study in patients who present with deep vein thrombosis. Uh, when we started the study, river oxaban was only approved for the treatment of DVT, and subsequently during the conduct of the trial, it was approved for pulmonary embolism and, and then uh, during the course of the study, we included patients who had pulmonary embolism in addition uh, to deep vein thrombosis. More than 5,714 patients were included in the study, half of whom received river oxaban and half received the standard of care. The objective was to determine the safety, largely the safety of river oxaban, looking at major bleeding, but we also looked at uh, uh, recurrent VTE and all-cause mortality. Uh, when you, we look at the, uh, the patient characteristics, they're slightly different. The, the clinicians choose to, or chose to give uh, the river oxaban patient, the river oxaban to the lower risk patients, the younger patients, the patients with better renal function and less cancer-associated thrombosis, and also importantly, uh, fewer pulmonary emboli. So they were different, but when you look at the absolute numbers, uh, there are lower rates of both major bleeding uh, recurrent VTE and death in the patients who receive river oxaban. But in order to take into account that imbalance in the patient characteristics, we did propensity adjustment. And when we did the propensity adjustment uh, on the hazard ratios of the comparison of river oxaban with uh, standard of care, we found that uh, they were just as good as standard of care with respect to major bleeding. Uh, uh, and uh, with respect to recurrent VTE, there was no difference as well as no difference in mortality. When we looked at the absolute difference and compared that with uh, the, the figures obtained in uh, the phase three clinical trials, they were virtually identical with respect to major bleeding, 0.8 and 0.7. Uh, we saw no major differences in recurrent VTE or all-cause mortality. And I think that uh, uh, what this study has told us is that we can truly translate the information obtained in the phase three clinical trial into clinical practice and will give clinicians confidence that river oxaban is a very effective treatment for patients who present with acute deep vein thrombosis. One other interesting observation was that the duration of, some patients of course were hospitalized, others weren't, but when they were hospitalized, the duration of hospitalization was shorter in the patients who received uh, river oxaban, even after adjustment for difference in patient characteristics. Uh, so what does it tell us? It says, tells us that river oxaban is a very good alternative to what our standard of care is at the moment, and with the reduction in uh, duration of hospital stay, it will reduce hospital costs, it will reduce um, all of the healthcare costs with reference uh, to uh, the treatment of deep vein thrombosis. I think this is a very important advance. I'd like to thank Dr. Echeverry and the Columbian Society 
of cardiology for the opportunity to uh, give you this information. I think it will impact on the, the, the practice of clinicians in Colombia.